knock scrapes. If you've followed my work, you've heard me say it many times before, they are by far the most underutilized tool we have at our management and hunting disposal. As a matter of fact, I rely on them probably more than any other single tool. This is where it all begins. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. I'll go ahead and hang licking branches all over around Buck's bedding areas their travel corridor between their bedding area and the food source. I'll often go ahead and make a nice little staging plot about 50 yards into the timber before you hit the open field and I'm gonna riddle that with licking branches and probably plant a couple scrape trees out there. Mock scrapes can get bucks to waste extra time on our ground, keeping them on our side of the fence and keeping us in the hunting game. They can be used to create social hubs in those nice little staging plots anywhere, anywhere deer concentrate before they hit larger food sources. Those little areas that they burn the last few minutes of daylight before going out in those entrances, you litter them with mock scrapes and you're creating a social hub of frenzied activity. One of the misconceptions about mock scrapes is that only immature young bucks are gonna work them. That's not true. When you have your cuttyback camera photos and you're looking at them and you see a lot of young bucks, a lot of yearlings, two-year-olds working these mock scrapes, Normally, those mock scrapes are the ones where the young bucks are going to be, on the edges of food plots, on the edges of fields, on the edges of the cover, in the wide open areas, where they're most likely going to be roaming throughout the day. Mature bucks like to stick to their core range, and that normally means the thicker cover. Not always, but a lot of times. And that's where you want to place these mock scrapes to get a good census on the older bucks in your herd. You know, Charlie Alzheimer taught us a lot about deer behavior during the rut. And one of them was using mock scrapes to bring this behavior right in front of your cameras. The key that he taught us, that overhanging licking branch, has everything to do with a scrape, whether it's a mock scrape or a real scrape. That overhanging licking branch is the number one key to any scrape. Bucks are gonna come to that licking branch and they're gonna deposit chemical signals. A lot of those chemical signals in saliva, in urine on the ground, and in preorbital scent. That's in the corner of the eyeball. Think of it as the tear duct. When you watch a buck work a scrape, that's where he's depositing most of that scent, and that scent is what's gonna be the key for other deer when they come through that area. They're gonna to wanna to check it out and check in, so to speak, to see what other deer are in the area. All things being equal, all deer are gonna use that mock scrape throughout the year. They're gonna use that licking branch. Could be does, could be fawns, could be bucks. That's something we learned through research. Not just bucks use mock scrapes. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, try it, and go hunt. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows and by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. There is no substitute. When we come back, we put these mock scrapes to the test in Illinois as we join Steve Bartilla on a management hunt with his daughter, Beth. 
happens to be a field in the very back corner, hidden in the middle of the woods, and I went ahead and planted a scrape tree. When we return. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Redneck Blinds. This week we're making magic with mock scrapes. Steve Bartilla will tell you he uses them more than any other management tool to keep deer around and create social hubs for all the deer in the area. Then I'll oftentimes use them to go ahead and help draw deer to within shooting range on open food sources and that's what we're about to do with my daughter. For Steve, this is when the real magic happens, when he can use this setup to lure a buck to within easy shooting range of his daughter Beth. Took her out on a property that I manage. Happens to be a field in the very back corner, hidden in the middle of the woods. And I went ahead and planted a scrape tree right out in front of the redneck months before the hunt. And mock scrapes are a key part of this. Part of the reason that the bucks kept hitting there, of course they're gonna hit there for the food, but they kept hitting it again and again and again and again because of that mock scrape because of another scrape tree I planted a little bit further down and because it is littered with licking branches that I went ahead and nailed, wired onto trees and bent existing ones down, putting them right at nose level. The more we get bucks to work scrapes on our ground, the more they keep us in the game. The more we're in the game, the longer we got a chance to make it all happen. At this point, we should probably mention that this is firearm season in Illinois, but these deer are not extremely pressured. Steve has earmarked a management buck that he can't wait to cull with the help of Beth, who has no shortage of animals to watch. This is a high percentage hunt, and Steve is only too happy to be behind the camera for this one. On the way in, all I did was take a scent wick, hang it from that licking branch, put a little special gold nesters in it. absolutely thrilled I was when one of the management bucks that we needed to get rid of happened to walk up and start working that licking branch with me and the daughter sitting 20 yards away. I'm telling you what, that was an absolute blast. <laughs> she makes a great shot on the animal. It runs about 50 yards, piles up. We scurry down, slap a tag on it. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. This week, we're on location in Illinois with Steve Bartilla on a management hunt, but this time he's behind the camera. 
The hunter is his daughter, Beth, and so far she's taken out a management buck that came in to work a mock scrape put there by Steve. Part of the reason that the bucks kept hitting there, of course they're gonna hit there for the food, but they kept hitting it again and again and again and again because of that mock scrape. Now she's hoping to fill a doe tag to help her dad thin out a few of the females in the herd. The spot he's chosen this time is a food plot planted with turnips. It's adjacent to a cornfield, and of course, once again, Steve has put in a mock scrape with a licking branch. And that is the key. You put a licking branch at nose level to rutting bucks in the right place, and they're going to work those scrapes. It's gonna happen. The crops have fared well here, so it shouldn't take the deer long to show up. Steve had Beth take out the younger doe, as the older one is valued as a more dominant doe in the herd. Oh, it is dead as a doornail. Let's wrap it around. Yeah, right around there. Now you might dismiss this as being unrealistic since it's on a managed property. So Steve invites you to experiment with mock scrapes on your own piece of ground. Go out there, play around. At first, you don't even need to use the sense. Just experiment with getting that licking branch in the right place. Once you got that down, then consider going out and buying some scrape drippers and filling them with some golden scrape. That's just gonna take the effectiveness up two or three more notches. I go ahead and I save the magnum scrape drippers and the golden scrape for the stands that I'm actually planning on hunting. On the rest, whether I'm just trying to inventory the deer, whether I'm trying to get them to waste their time there, or I'm trying to get them to create a social, a social hub out of this area right here, those, the majority of them, all I've got is a licking branch right at nose level. And that is the key. Add it all together and it's a thing of pure beauty. You know, you might have read my blogs or columns in the magazine where I say I'm an equal opportunity deer hunter. All I mean by that is I love to go deer hunting no matter what's in season. Whether it's with a crossbow, a regular bow, shotgun, muzzleloader, rifle. To me it doesn't matter. It's all opportunity and we all should embrace that no matter who's going hunting. Today I'm hunting with a crossbow and these are not guns. I don't care what anybody says. Some people call them cross guns. They are bow and arrow. Yes, it's delivering by a different means, but it's still sending an arrow and you have to have proper shot placement to kill a deer. A crossbow is not a super easy thing to shoot offhand. As a matter of fact, I never ever want to shoot this thing offhand because just a little bit of flinch, it's just like shooting my regular bow. That arrow can be way over there and now I'm looking at a gut shot deer or something even worse. So what I like to do, especially when hunting out of a blind, is always having a rest. Shooting off a window is fine. Shooting off a sticks to me is even better. Now I can make this doubly better by using a window and this shooting stick. Then I have a really solid front and back rest. But when I don't want to stick that crossbow out the window, which I usually don't want to because it's movement, deer might see me, I just set up my shooting sticks. What's really nice about these shooting sticks these days is they're really rock solid and they're adjustable. This one has a trigger on it that allows me to adjust it up and down to make just the slightest adjustments so I can get perfectly in line with my shot. So what I like to do is just have that shooting stick all ready to go. If a deer shows up, I just get my crossbow ready. Obviously I'd have it cocked. And then I would get my crossbow up and on the sticks. And I'd be all ready to roll. So once you're all set up, that's all you really need to do. You have your shooting stick ready. You can put your crossbow away until it's time for a shot. But in this situation here, what I would like to do 
is not only make sure that I'm steady and I can shoot across this field that I'm watching here, but I can actually reach in here and I can almost get this thing prepared to where I'm almost shooting off a bench. Having my hand underneath my shoulder is going to steady that crossbow just as if I was shooting off a sled at the bench. I don't like to leave anything to chance, so I have this thing rock solid. I'm going to put my crossbow away and I'm going to be ready when the moment of truth arrives. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Analogix. Protect your herd with the power of science. Thompson Center, America's master gun makers. Sever Broadheads, straight through it. Hunter Safety System, stay connected. And by Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. Hunt em Big with Steve Bartilla. Whether it's this show, Hunt em Big, or our other series, Grow em Big, we end up talking an awful lot about mock scrapes. The reason? They're very effective tools that don't have to cost you a cent. I know a lot of people out there whether it's hunting or especially in habitat management, it's they're like, oh man, I'd love to do something like that, but I can't, I don't have the money for it. So many of these things do not have to cost us a cent that are effective tools that we can utilize. Mock scrapes is one of them. You know, right off the bat, they work very, very well for scouting. If you're going into a new area or an area of your property that you want to understand a little bit better, just go out there and make a whole bunch of mock scrapes. All you have to do in those cases is get that licking branch down to nose level. I mean, right here, I'm standing on a, a trail going through the woods. Okay, I'm in a little bit of an opening right here. I can all but promise you that if I take a branch, bend it down and stick it right here as those bucks are going through here, and those two, for that matter, they're gonna stop and they're gonna check out that branch. Okay, so for scouting, just go ahead and put a bunch of licking branches that are that those bucks are going to darn near bump right into, you know, at nose level. Some of the times I'll go ahead and scrape a little bit of the dirt, an oval of dirt underneath it, because I want to go ahead and inspect that track. I come back and there's an overly large track there. You know what? That's a mature buck. You go out to your hunting property, make 5, 10, 15, 20. Heck, I personally, I make over 200 mock scrapes a year. Okay. Um, but make those 5, 10, 15, 20 mock scrapes in areas where you want to know if Mr. Big is working it. In this case, as I said, you don't even have to use scent. All you have to do is put that licking branch right there. And it helps to go ahead and create a little oval of dirt underneath it. You want to inspect that track size. That's all you have to do to utilize them for scouting. And I'm here to tell you, I've killed a couple bucks 100% because mock scrapes keyed me that, oh, there's a mature buck in this area. I might want to set up there. Next, from a hunting standpoint, you can use it to help inventory your bucks. Right now, it's when I'm filming this, this is July. Heck, I got sweat running off the tip of my nose as I speak here in the woods. It's mid-July, way too early to be putting out mock scrapes. I'll tell you what I did yesterday. I planted six scrape trees. When I'm talking about planting scrape trees, what I'm talking about is I'm finding a tree that when buried, two and a half to three feet deep in the dirt, you know, is gonna have a licking branch right there at nose level to those bucks. Okay, now I've got a stand over here, so 20 yards out into this opening, 30 yards out into this opening, 25 yards, a known distance that you can easily shoot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dig that hole, and I will dig it two and a half to three feet deep, and I will put that cut tree down into that hole and then stuff that dirt in there really good. Go ahead and go ahead and tamp it down very, very good because you're gonna have some rubbing going on in that tree most likely as well. You know, so really anchor it in well, point those licking branches back towards the stand. So what does that do for me? Okay, right off the bat, I have a yardage marker out in front of my stand on that opening. Okay, that's helpful because many, many times I don't have time to go like this. And you know what? I practice yardage estimation every single year, but being off by five, six yards can make a big difference. Okay. So I know that's 20 yards. That buck's standing at oh, about 10 yards. Okay, that's a 30 yard shot. Okay. Next, it serves as a focal point. Scrapes are essentially the white tail's equivalent to billboards. It's meant to advertise information to as many other deer as possible. When that scrape tree is out in the middle of that opening, 
it sticks out like a sore thumb. When it sticks out like a sore thumb, the deer tend to gravitate to it. Is every single deer that comes out in that opening gonna go over there and check it out every single time? No, no it's not. But we're bumping the odds of them doing so. By pointing the licking branches to the stand, what ends up happening is not only do I have a yardage marker, not only do I have something that's sucking deer to my location, but now when they work that mock scrape, now when they come into work it, they almost always give you a good shot angle by pointing those licking branches towards the stand. And at the same time, when they're working that mock scrape, their attention is 100% away from you. So you got all day to grab your bow, slap an arrow in, come to full draw and let that thing fly. Focus is away. You don't have to worry about him busting you. Other deer, certainly. So you start adding all that stuff up and that really makes a big difference. On the ones that I'm hunting, most often, I will go ahead and hang a magnum scrape dripper with them and fill them with either active scrape or golden scrape. I'll get 10 to 20% more activity at this mock scrape by having that scent and scent dripper there. Regardless if you're using them for hunting, for inventorying your bucks or scouting, go ahead and slap a bunch of mock scrapes out there. Be creative. This right here is our most powerful weapon. The more we use it, the more success we're gonna experience in the deer woods. Thank you.